Yeah. After this, the price definitely gotta go up. Oh. What's going on, guys? Yeah. It is Peeps with Tweets. Brandon Verastro here, your host. Uh, today, episode three, we got two very special guests. Let me give a little intro. Again, these are all off the top, so I'm probably going to fuck it up, but we're going to be all right. So these two have been my homies for a couple of years now. Uh, they host the Popular Demand podcast. Um, they let me on their podcast a very long time ago. I appreciate it very much. You guys are the first people to ever put me on to a podcast. Um, you know, from, from the Twitter world. And I appreciate that very much, uh, knowledgeable on all things, basketball and music, my guys, Jordan and Delon, how are we doing boys? Pretty decent, pretty decent, pretty decent. That's the first time I didn't have to like come like with, with the catchphrase. I'm getting intro to the podcast. I'm happy about it. Cause it makes me panic each time before we do it. So <laughs> but I should have made you do one. Honestly, I really should have made you do what's up jordan yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's gonna all right so jordan's connection's a little all fucked up but he, he'll get right <laughs> give it a second or two come on jordan get pull through there, there we go. I'm, here, I'm here i'm here i'm here it, it, was, right. it, was, it was acting crazy all right go ahead give it what's up jordan how we doing i'm doing great family uh i guess i don't, I don't know what you heard now because i was talking but like i said i'm glad to be here uh like i said i uh first heard your first podcast which was uh man uh, new faces i can't remember how i found it i don't know if you sent me the link or whatever and i listened to it and i was like yo these guys are hilarious let me tell the about these guys so <laughs> it, and it's, it's, it's been history since then brandon has been an awesome guy been glad to it was, it was an honor to have met him talk to him and shared our thoughts on uh music and basketball Man, how'd you do a better intro than me on my own shit? Fuck out of here, Jordan. So, shut the fuck up. Hey, right. man. I'm, 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 <laughs> this. I'm a bit. Stop doing that shit to me, all right? Fuck out of here. <laughs> all right. So um, how I start these podcasts off is I like uh, for the, the guest, you know, to, to read off their bio on Twitter, kind of get a feel of who they are as people. So if you guys want to do that, if you guys even have a bio, Jordan's frozen a fucking again. He's going to have a problem this whole podcast, but we'll figure it out. Uh, Delon, if you want to go first, since Jordan's all frozen up and shit. Uh, so my bio on Twitter is um, at podcast man slash at the posse underscore um, slash your favorite Waffle House employee. Um, so, of course, Jordan and I both represent the Pro- popular man podcast. We also re- represent um, the problematic posse gaming channel. Um, but let me go ahead to my Instagram bio. because I think like that's a little bit more encompassing. Um, of who I am. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me get to that real quick. Jesus. Well, me and Jordan are having problems today. Hopefully, uh, I just switched over my internet because I was on the wrong Wi-Fi. Hopefully, that fixed it. I actually found my bio, so I can go first. All right, uh, go ahead. Host of the Popular Demand podcast and co-host of the Problematic Posse. Hashtag Clippers. Short, sweet, to the point. That last that last part's unfortunate for you, but I, I appreciate it anyway. <laughs> I, I, I always wonder like what people think like, oh, this guy got some nice tweets. Let me go, let me go through his click on his um, profile and they say Clippers. They're like, nope. Especially after last year, they're like, nope, not doing it. No, that's that's one thing too. That's why I don't I, like at one point on Twitter, I I was careful not to talk too reckless about basketball. Cause I knew that'd be like the first thing people would say if I called somebody trash. Like, nigga, you were for the Clippers. I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> And then back to it. <laughs> and you got nothing to say. All right, but Delon, what is your uh, Instagram bio? Um, Instagram, he, him, 25 years old, um, University of Mississippi Aluminum. Um, Instagram slash fitness model, retired burrito artist. Um, DM for booking MO, my flat tummy T promo code. DM me for that. Um, you know, I think that really encompasses everything that I am. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Jack of all trades, a renaissance man. Yeah, you know, just a little something. Just a little something. I, I didn't realize Shout out to the days working at South Depot wrapping them burritos, though. Shout out. That's what made me a man. That's what made me a man. I didn't realize that your uh your bio on on Twitter was popular and podcast, the posse, your favorite Waffle House employee. <laughs> <laughs> never, I've never worked at Waffle House. I, I never you know, <laughs> I respect those people. Those people deserve A. Those are the real essential workers right there. Waffle right. House employees, man. 
twenty four seven. You were there for me. My father wasn't. But thank you for having us on, Brandon. Let's talk. Let's talk. All right. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. There's going to be a lot of laughing going on. All right, so before we get to how the podcast started, I want to talk about where you guys grew up, uh, which I believe both of you is Mississippi. Um, for some reason, I feel like Delon grew up in Minnesota since he's a Minnesota fan of everything, but I want to hear both of your guys' stories about uh, growing up in Mississippi, going to college in Mississippi, uh, university, all that shit. You know, man, Mississippi is us against everybody. Just... <laughs> Everybody in the world thinks Mississippi doesn't have running water. Uh, they think we don't have internet. I remember I was in band. My band director said he would go to conventions and he'll come back and like he said band director from across the world like ask him like you're from Mississippi? Do they wear shoes there? And like yeah, we we wear shoes in Mississippi. And he said he's had it asked multiple times by different people in different places. So I didn't know there was a running joke in America that people that people didn't think people in Mississippi wore shoes. But anyway, growing up in Mississippi, it's a very slow paced um, lifestyle. Not a lot to do here. So, uh, and we're always late to things. Like we're late on trends when it comes to like music and we're late on trends when it comes to fashion. Like whatever, whatever Atlanta is on, we'll be on that six months later. That's generally how Mississippi operates. So growing up in Mississippi, it, like I said, it's just slow, very slow. And going to college in Mississippi was actually when I started getting exposed to a lot of different ways of thinking, getting exposed to a lot of different kinds of people. Because a lot, in my, growing up in a small town in Mississippi, almost everybody was the same kind of person. And you didn't really get to meet a lot of different um, ideologies and ways of um, thinking. So it was cool because, like I said, I got to meet somebody like DeLon. And I can earnestly say I've never, ever met anybody like DeLon before I met him. So that's, what, that's, my, that's my experience. All right. I praise for Delon there or, or a diss. I don't really know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll find out as it goes on. Delon, what, how about you? So the thing about Mississippi, uh, there's two, possibly three very different Mississippis. Um, so Jordan grew up in Northern Mississippi. Um, I grew up on the coast. So I was like beach life, um, basically a retirement community, Long Beach, Mississippi. I never wore shoes. I actually did not wear shoes. And not because like super country, because it's, you know, beach. Um, and another thing about Mississippi, we're always late to trend, but what impressed me about your podcast, Brandon, Mississippi doesn't necessarily have so many people to look up to. That's why our few people that we have, we're always like Mississippi legend, Mississippi legend. Like, I don't understand, like, it baffled me how you could interview someone from your hometown, Brandon, like <laughs> week after week after week. I was like, how the hell? Um, but yeah, that's, that Mississippi just does not have that, ironically. Uh, the, the people who we have to claim just don't claim us. Rick Ross is the soldier boys. <laughs> we have to <laughs> remind them that they're from Mississippi. Um, but yeah, super slow lifestyle. Um, I grew up in kind of like a more eclectic uh, background because I lived right on a, by a military base. Um, but definitely going to the University of Mississippi, which is a uh, historically racist school, a racist background. That's why I had to meet a lot of uh, more forward thinking people, ironically enough. So you really got to get out of your own town in Mississippi to meet people who aren't the Hicks. Yeah, and I was going to say, because it's Ole Miss, right? Not Mississippi State. No, they no, that's, they're, they're close to us. Yeah, University of Mississippi. Okay, because I, I, I thought there was some sort of racist history there, but I didn't know if that was that one or Mississippi State. And it may be both. I don't really know. It, it, it's kind of both, but it's like Ole Miss really leaned into it for a while. Just like, yeah, we racist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what? And then, that, and, that, and then, you know, Mississippi State kind of like tried to big back away from it a long time ago. But Ole Miss just now is like, oh, you know, that's in the past, which, which was like 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Our, our mascot, Brandon, they, the Ole Miss Rebels. And I guess you can guess the Rebels. Yeah. So the, we've been having like a 10-year battle with the white people in charge because there's Confederate statues on campus and we've been battling to get the move. Like, it's just that kind of environment. The, um, the mascot was a Confederate soldier. Just, just, yeah. So, you know, we had to change. Then it changed it. Uh, when we was at Ole Miss, they changed the Confederate soldier to a black bear. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what the and, fuck? and now, and now I think we're sharks or something like that. I don't know. Sharks. It's hard. What? To, it's hard to keep. It's the hard land to, sharks. Be specific, Jordan. Land sharks. It's hard to keep up, man. Oh my god, that's 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 terrible too. Oh my god. 
You guys can't pick a name for shit. All right, but growing, <laughs> but growing up in Mississippi, like, did you experience a lot of racism? I mean, I would assume you probably did, considering the fact that maybe because I don't know Mississippi like that. It just feels like there's nothing there but racism. So I don't really know <laughs> what else like occurs down there. But I would assume that, especially at Ole Miss, you're probably getting some looks as two there's young a- black men. You know, uh, Brandon said I may export as racism. I'm dead. <laughs> We also big in catfish, but uh, yeah. anyway, uh, <laughs> I grew up in a predominantly black town. So uh, I think like my high school class might have had 10 white people in it. Uh, that, yeah. This, so basically I grew up around, everywhere I went, it was predominantly black people. It okay. wasn't until I got to Ole Miss that I was actually around like predominantly white people, no matter where I went, whether I went to the library, whether I went to like the bars, whether I went to like the gym, there would always be like more white people than me there. So but even despite that, yeah, I did experience racism with, like within the school, my high school, because like even though there was barely any white kids in the school, they all the teachers were white for the most part, like almost all of them were, and some of them were indeed racist. I remember I was in sixth grade, and this is when Obama was first uh, running for president, and we had a teacher just flat out telling us in class, like, if Obama gets elected, I'm leaving the country, and wow. uh, I'll never forget the day after he got elected, we. We got in class and one of the kids said, Miss Taylor, why are you still here? <laughs> and she got mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, racism, I've, I've experienced it in my hometown, despite there not being like a lot, like a large racial diversity. And surprisingly enough, despite the rep that Ole Miss has, I didn't really experience a lot of it, but that's mostly because I stayed in. I was mostly in my comfort zone, didn't actually go out and about around a lot of different people. Um, so I kind of avoided it, even though I know a lot of other people or my friends experienced it. Right. Yeah, that's that's kind of crazy because I figured at Ole Miss, where it's predominantly white, there would definitely be some sort of tension at least. I mean, you probably experienced some tension maybe, but like I thought there would be a little bit more. Uh, maybe there's more forward thinking people there than ah, there. I haven't answered yet, Brandon. I okay. Have <laughs> I have right. uh, so me growing up in my hometown, I grew up in a predominantly white uh, town um, where it wasn't, a, I had a lot of experiences where it was like over racism towards Delon. Um, I had experience where like after a football game, um, me and my homie were walking and then dude on the football team, he was like a senior, he pulled a gun on us and said some unsightly things um put a shotgun confederate flag out the back of the truck all that kind of stuff um different things uh potential girlfriends parents side comments in the store my mom but like that those weren't like so plentiful it was mostly like like the the mindset of the people who were trying to put because like i was like like very good athlete top of the class all that kind of stuff um a lot of you're the good one that kind of stuff uh Ugh. You're one of the good ones type deals. And I was never going for it. So I had a lot of confrontations with adults very early in my life. Um, but at Ole Miss, I had a lot of those situations because I was out and about through work, through organizations, through clubs, through all that kind of stuff. Um, so I interacted with, I'm pretty sure a lot more white people than Jordan probably did day to day. Um, I worked at a gym. So I had to like come into conflict with all these people. And once they get angry, snap like that. Uh, I had to deal with a lot of meetings with uh, fraternities, all that kind of stuff. And you could just see, again, not as much overt racism as like there's an invisible door that certain people aren't allowed to get through um, to even socialize with these people. Also, Ole Miss game days is some of the most like racist things like I've ever seen in my life. But other than that, other than that, I feel like we just we went to Ole Miss at a very uh, liberal time in the country to where they're changing flags, removing statues, all that kind of stuff. And people are obviously reacting towards that. Uh, so again, not necessarily at the lawn, but racist. I actually thought that, uh, I actually thought that like, cause like growing up in like, I didn't grow up in Northern Mississippi, I grew up in middle Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And like everybody in my hometown, you know, being predominant black, they had this idea at Ole Miss was like hail. And if you went there as a black man, you were setting yourself up. And uh, I went there because I knew that would be the best way to transition from undergrad to med school. And so that's why I chose to go there for the, for the academic part. 
And I thought, like, you know, you talk about the tension. I thought the tension just was going to be there all the time. Like, I feel like you go up there and it's like black on the side, white people on the side. But it wasn't really like that. Not all the time, at least. There were moments and things of that nature that did occur. But I remember, like, there was, I forgot which shooting it was, which is a shame I can't remember because it's just so many that happened. That uh, I think a lot of black people went in front of, like, our union, school union, and, like, protested by laying on the ground in a response to what was going on. And I, that was like the first time that like some social work had, uh, social justice work had been done on campus. I thought to myself, oh, it's going to be ugly out there. But no, everybody was very respectful and mindful. Like white people came out there, watched and uh, paid um, respects and went on by. So your know, Ole Miss now, more liberal than it was before, but more liberal than overtly racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, most, it, yeah. Most of the racism that happened in Ole Miss were from people coming onto campus. Uh, to protest like like old white people, not necessarily the students. Yeah, right. We had the KKK on campus a couple times. That was yeah, that was, yeah, that they cool. did. Wait, they what? Got, yeah, the Klan yeah. came to campus a couple times. I remember I was like walking from the union, and like I got a text message. It was like nighttime, and I got a text message said, "John, you know the Klan's on campus. You better, <laughs> you better hope you're in your dorm." I said, "I'm not in my dorm, man." I started running because I didn't know where they were. I was like the Klan on campus. I'm by myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro, that's scary. Holy shit. That is the police escort. They're there with the police escort. Yeah, that's 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 the craziest part. I Wait. was I was I was walking from the union to or uh, yeah, from the union to work at the gym. Um and it was right during the election. And then the KKK had gotten their permits to do illegal <laughs> illegal protests. So I'm walking and I'm walking through like a line of them. They're like tunneled up. And they're like, make America great again, make America great again. Just like waving like red hats and flags. And they're like, yo, I'm just trying to get to work. I'm like, I'm truly, <laughs> I truly do not care about this. I just want to go clock in, my God. Oh, great wow. times. Great times. Wow. Wow. And I guess like for me, like going to school in PA, like I never really experienced that shit. And then just, I mean, of course I'm white. So like, obviously I'm not experiencing racism, but I've never seen like the KKK come up to my school and, do some wild shit like that like that's fucking scary like what what the fuck like did you guys ever like can even consider like transferring at that point i didn't just because um i know this probably sounds bad but i was thinking to myself like it didn't really affect me it wasn't affecting my studies and like they were on campus but like you know no nothing really happened so I just, you know, I look kind of looked the, I kind of looked the other way and just continue going. To, that's that's kind of my idea was like I knew Ole Miss was racist. Like I always knew that kind of stuff happened on Ole Miss campus, and I was like, I'm just here to get my degree and go on yeah. to the next level, and that's all I cared about. So as long as I was, as long as I felt safe, which I did feel safe for majority of the time I was there, I I didn't really care. And me, ironically enough going to Ole Miss made me feel more in tune with my blackness. So yeah, it didn't really make me want to transfer. And also, I don't think I'm like invincible or anything, but I really have been living my life since the eighth grade, like wish a nigga would mode, like bet you won't be bad. It's so, like when I saw the KKK, I'm like, is something going to happen? And I don't think I'm invincible. Like I know I could die at any point in one of those conversations, yeah. but nobody beat my ass yet. So, you know, that really has to make me want to transfer. <laughs> DeLon's want, DeLon wants all the smoke on anybody. That's fucking great. Oh, my oh, God. <laughs> it's fantastic now how did you guys end up meeting i'm guessing through school or through twitter or what What was it it was it was through school so i was privileged i had i had scholarships coming into old miss that's no reason why i went there because i didn't have to pay a damn thing and Ooh. um when nice. i got the, so i did so with that being said I did not have a job my freshman through junior year of college crazy thing is me and delon live in the same dorm when we were freshmen but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't talk to nobody. So I was like, I ain't about to go up and introduce myself to this guy. So I'll see him around. I'll just like walk past him, would never say a word to him. But my senior year, I was tired of being broke because even though I had scholarship money, I had just enough to get by. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like do things or fun things or buy things I wanted. So I said, let me get a job. So I got two jobs. One, I worked at, a, at the school newspaper writing music reviews. And then my second job was working at the gym where DeLon worked. And that's how we ended up meeting. I was like, oh, this guy's this guy actually cool. I wish I had actually talked to him three years ago when, when we lived in the same building. So Jordan was embracing his privilege. Story, my side of the story, we, yeah, we live in the same place. We had a mutual friend to Boris, um, <laughs> which is funny. That never worked out. But so I, I worked at the gym um, and every semester, 
they'd hire like two black guys and they would always quit. <laughs> I'd be like, damn. <laughs> I'd be like, damn, we bond and they just quit. And I don't know, Jordan got there, I'm like, damn, finally, somebody we could watch basketball with. So we just sat on all the shifts. We all picked the late night shifts, turn on the TV, put on basketball, listen to music. We was bulling in there, boy. It didn't yes, do no work. Man, I wish I had somebody that would watch. Like every job I go to, nobody watches fucking basketball. Not a soul. I'm like, how the fuck do none of you watch any sort of sport? Like it wasn't even like just bet. Like they don't know sports. I'm like, what the fuck? How does this keep happening? I don't understand. No one watches basketball here at all. It is unreal. That's a terrible existence. I ain't gonna lie to you because turn this, it working at the gym would have been a lot of. Uh, less fun if Delon wasn't there because a lot of sh- there were shifts where I got on shifts where I couldn't talk about nothing with anybody I was just yeah. there for like four or five hours like what do I get <laughs> off I was like oh yeah. Delon's here oh we're gonna talk- oh it's gonna be fun it's, it's a good time yeah I can't I'd be like oh you, you guys watch the NBA draft and they're like no I don't know what the fuck that is I'm like all right well I guess I'll go fuck myself then cool whatever that's fine did you guys watch the football game no I was playing Call of Duty all right well fuck me cool great <laughs> And that yeah, shit was so funny because I talked to Jordan. He's like, I'm a Clippers fan. I'm like, damn, I've never met a Clippers fan. He's like, what are you like? I'm a Timberwolves fan. He's like, damn, I've never met a Timberwolves fan. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you two do have random ass teams to like, honestly. I never met – I don't think I ever met a Clippers or Timberwolves fan either until you guys, to be honest. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> I've met KG fans. I've never met a Timberwolves <laughs> fan, and then I never met – I mean, who the fuck – was on the Clippers to like at that point, but whatever. Um, no one likes Chris Paul. He's an yep. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, speaking, I guess we might as well talk about how the fuck do you guys end up liking those teams? So um, I have at first, I was a fa- when I first started liking the NBA, I was a fan of players more so than teams. So even in the age where people were a fan of teams, I was a fan of players because mm-hmm. I casually watched it. So I was actually a fan of KG. Love KG to death. Yeah. Uh, because he was so he was so crazy. Key, I'm like, oh, this guy's absolutely insane. He's crazy. And then he ends up going to the Celtics. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm rock with the Celtics because I actually hate the Lakers. Uh, so this is <laughs> this is perfect. So I was kind of a Celtics fan for a little while. Um, I also was a big fan of Dwight. I just, I love the big man. Uh, watching basketball, so I was a fan of Dwight when he was with the Magic. Then yeah. he went to the uh, Lakers. And I kind of like, eh, I can't root for him anymore. And I. <laughs> With that being said, Mississippi does not have any sports teams, no, no pro sports. So a lot of times people in Mississippi are a fan of the biggest fan base in any sport. So that's why like most people are here are like either Cowboys fans, Laker fans, Patriots fans, stuff like that. Or if and if you're not that kind of person, you're usually a fan of either the New Orleans team or the Atlanta team. So I was a fan of the New Orleans basketball team. I was a fan of Chris, of Chris Paul. Absolutely love Chris Paul. One of my favorite players of all time. And when he got shipped to the, when he was about to get shipped to the Lakers, I thought like, oh man, I ain't going to be able to root for Chris Paul anymore. I can't stand the Lakers. Then he got sent to the Clippers. I'm like, the Clippers? And to be honest, be honest with you, I didn't know the Clippers existed <laughs> before, <laughs> before that. I'm like, <laughs> Clippers. Uh, so he got traded there. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. So they're like, they're like the Lakers rivals. That's perfect. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a root for them. And so that's how I be that's how I became a Clippers fan because of Chris Paul. And I also was a big fan of Blake Griffin, big man, when he was in Oklahoma. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. You became a Clippers fan and you don't even know who the fuck they were. Yeah. Your whole I was, life. I, I was very I was a very a very frivolous kid. Like, so you never had to experience like the horrible like the entire drought of the Clippers entire existence. No, no, no. I didn't experience the knucklehead Clippers. Uh the Donald Sterling two, 90s where he was basically picking all the wild candy and shit like that. I didn't yeah. experience none of that. But nobody can deny my fandom as a Clipper fan because I've experienced just as much pain as probably <laughs> those who were fans from the 90s to now in just the 2010s. That team is well, that, The whole so franchise pain. is pain, bro. Uh, sometimes I think I hate myself. I didn't, <laughs> I could, because I could have easily been like, man, fuck this team. When Chris Paul and Blake left, I could easily like, – all my friends are calling me like I'm a free agent. It's like, hey, man, have you just have you, have you ever thought about being a Lakers fan? You ever thought about being on Heat Nation? I'm like, nah, man, I'm going to stick it out, man. You could go to Jordan. You could go be a Rockets fan. We wouldn't even judge you, fam. Chris Paul's there. That's your favorite player. I'm like, yeah, I could. But, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to stick it out. So, yeah. 
And they, they fooled you, bro. They fooled you. You stuck around. They fooled around with you. You're tricking me, man. You got to run around sometimes. Pat Bev, Pat Bev running his fucking Tim's on the beach in Mississippi. He can't fucking do shit. The <laughs> <laughs> explain how you was a Timberwolves fan, man. <laughs> so, so it's it's funny that you say like you've experienced as much pain as everyone else because there's one thing that that you as a Clippers fan has had that me as a Timberwolves fan has not had that's hope. Um, so I don't you know uh, me well I live or where I grew up it was like 50 minutes from New Orleans so yeah. Um, Pelicans were my favorite basketball team. Um, well, Hornets were my favorite basketball team growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, I do hate the Saints, though. Let's not get that twisted. I hate the Saints. Least favorite football team. Jesus. And most annoying. Okay. Second most annoying fan base. Third. Third. Uh, Cowboys, Patriots, Saints. Yeah. But then um, my mm-hmm. uncle is from Minnesota. Shout out Uncle Andrew. Um, white guy, like 6'5", listens to like 90s hip hop, like favorite person on earth um i would spend my summers up there in minnesota and we got we watched timberwolves games we watched throwback timberwolves games all that kind of stuff he beat my ass on 2k using the timberwolves um see i just started liking timberwolves about 2007 um boy kevin love is my favorite player should have been a hall of famer should have been what happened a travesty but yeah no hope no hope ever i thought we had some hope this year that corona slapped us in the face um yeah. Despair. Wait. So you. So when did you become a like? What what year was it? Like so when Kevin Love was there, you were a fan. Uh, no, about about two thousand seven, two thousand eight. So yeah, about when Kevin Love got there. But that's when I started going up to Minnesota for the summers. Wow. So you didn't even experience the KG uh, Timberwolves. <sighs> I caught the I caught the tail end. I caught the tail end. My uncle put me on um, early, but like well, I devoted to the Timberwolves very early, or about two thousand seven. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I was. I, I there was one year they were like very close to going to a championship and that was when KG and like Latrell Sprewell were together and that shit was fire. That was a great duo. I'm not gonna lie, I love that duo. But then after that, you guys haven't done shit. So that's a not a single thing. <laughs> Are you hopeful at all in the future for what you have with Cat, D'Angelo Russell, and Anthony Edwards? Because I like I, I like Ant. I had to drop him fantasy. Fantasy right now, but I like him as a player. Yeah, I I am hopeful. It's like it's like through all of the you know shitty three and fourteen record, no four and fourteen record, we haven't seen them with Cat and with Cat playing the three and one. So I mean, you gotta be hopeful with that. But even when we got D'Angelo, they were both hurt and they never played together. They played like five to eight games together before the bubble started. Yeah. Um, Andy Edwards relatively hooping without cat there to give him any support so i'm hopeful not this season probably too far gone now um oh, yeah. but you know hey the bubble the, if we can just slide into the bubble the bubble works magic the suns were 8 last year if they can do that anything is possible that is true and they haven't really you know done anything crazy so far this year they're like okay they're like eighth seed or seventh seed or some shit like that but they're not you know, breaking any type of records and shit like that. Uh, are you, Jordan? I know you said on a podcast. You know, after we uh, we buried the the 2019 2020 Clippers. Um, are you, are you hopeful at all for um for the Clippers this year? I mean, they look very good. I mean, they've turned. It seems like they've turned a, a corner where nobody like is talking about them, and they fucking are thriving on that shit. I have a very toxic relationship with the Clippers because I have no business believing in them whatsoever. Okay. And it's like that, like, I remember after the Houston collapse, I almost quit watching basketball. I was so sick <laughs> in my stomach. I didn't even watch the next round. Like, I didn't watch the Warriors Rocket Series or I can't remember who the respective Eastern Series was that year. I was almost done with basketball. And despite how bad they made me feel, I came back and watched the next season as if nothing happened. Uh, and I told myself after what, what happened against Denver that – I'm not going to take this team serious ever again until they actually do something. Until they actually do it, I'm not taking them seriously. So yeah. I'm not penciling them in to be the Wefford's Conference Final. I'm not penciling them in to be in the finals. I believe they have potential to be there. I will say the way they've been playing, Ty Lue has done a phenomenal job uh, within the boys in the shape. He's actually instilled a system that the players know. Sort of, and he's established roles. Because like on the Doc River side, when Doc Rivers was there, players didn't know what their roles were. And that was, that was a p- large part of what caused the issues with like 
role players saying, I'm just good at Paul George and like role players asking them, why do they, why the Kawhi get this treatment and I don't. A lot of guys didn't know the roles. Talus come in and said, hey, these are your stars. This is what you guys are going to do. Ty, um, Lou Williams no longer um, no longer averaging the most touches on the team. He's now like sixth on the team in touches. He went from averaging 18 points. Now he's only averaging nine points because they don't they don't force feed him for uh, 24 minutes. The origin of popular demand. How did this start? When did you decide? Because I, I think Jordan was the first one to start it. So when did you decide that you wanted to do a podcast, um, you know, about about basketball and rap? So just to give some background, uh, it was about 2017 when I had the first thought. And originally the co-founder of the Popular Man podcast was my childhood friend, Mero, who grew up in the same town as me. Uh, we were big music fans. Used to go, he used to come on my crib every day. We'd watch rap interviews, rap freestyles, rap ciphers, and we'd watch basketball every single day. The, t- the games that were actually televised because I didn't know about streaming back then. And so we just loved, we, we lived, bre- we lived, breathed, ate basketball music for years. And it wasn't until I got to my senior year at Ole Miss that I thought, and I was listening to the Joe Budden podcast because that's when it was like, that was at its, at its height or when people were really starting to catch on to it. I think it was like 2017. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, wow, I, I like, listen to these guys, they sound like me and, and they sound like me and the rest of my friends when we debate music. And this is dope. And I was like, uh, I wish that I said, I said, I feel like we could do this. Like we, we have these same conversations in person. We could easily do this too. So I was, I kept, but I was like, I don't know how to do a podcast. I don't know how you do a podcast. I feel like it's going to be too hard. So I just kept procrastinating. 2018 comes that's my final semester at Ole Miss. And I decide, I told my friend Mero, Hey, we're going to finally do this. Popular Man started about two, no, it was 2017 is when the idea first started. Uh, it, became, it was an idea that me and my childhood friend Mero first began, and we started turning the wheels on. Uh, Mero, my childhood friend, we grew up listening to hip hop 24 7, live, breathe, ate, slept it. We'd watch, we watched rap interviews like Kanye West, and we would, uh, watching Kanye West interviews were a gym. Uh, we watch rap ciphers and rap freestyles and we would debate uh, who were the better rappers, our favorite lines from albums when they would drop. We would like, go to Rap Genius together. Uh, we watched basketball games together. We did all that great stuff and we just loved, we loved, you know, we loved it. So um, it wasn't until, but it wasn't until I heard the Joe Button podcast and listened to how much fun they had talking about music that I thought to myself, wow, that's what me and my friends all throughout college have been doing. Like, we should have a podcast too. Like we could easily do what these guys do. And, uh, but the thing is, I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know what, where you started making a podcast. I thought it was a big, terrible, long, difficult process. And I was also very nervous about recording something and putting it out there. So I procrastinated, didn't do it. <laughs> and then 2018 came, that was my last semester of college. I said, this is the last chance I'm gonna have to be able to record with some of these people that I hang out with. So let me just do it. So I set a date sometime in January, I think like January 26th. And I told my, my former co-host, the um, co-founder of the podcast, Mero, January 26th, we need to figure out how to make a podcast episode go up on that date. We need to make all our preparations. And I started looking into it. I'm like, wow, this is actually not that hard of a process. So the podcast began, it came, in, you know, it came into uh, life around January, 2018. And like I said, my co-host, Ben at the time, he bowed out, which led me to gaining, a, um, finding a new cast, new cast members to keep going. Because I was like, I kind of still want to do this. I'm having fun. So that's when I recruited Cord to the podcast. Um, later on down the road, I got my cousin, Jacquez, on board. And then later, even though I had known DeLon for like a year by that point, I, it finally dawned on me, DeLon loves basketball music. Literally, that's all we did at work together. Let me ask him if he want to be on the podcast. And then I recruited DeLon. And then finally about two, three, no, probably like four months after that, I recruited the last member of the podcast, last two members of the podcast, which are John and Cam. Okay. So it was, it wasn't even the original crew that started. Like how did, no. so it was Cord and well, Jacquez was a, a family member. How yeah. did uh, Cord get into the mix? Like where did you meet Cord through? Cause he's okay. not much of a, a social media presence per se. Like he's not really on Twitter much. So Cord went to old Mrs. Whale and, okay. um, 
I met him through some mutual friends at Ole Miss. It's funny because, like, so it's a very long story, but I'll just keep it short. One of my friends lost his memory when I was a freshman in college, and I had only known him for a couple of months. So when I saw him, he was in my dorm getting food, and I said, what's up? And he was like, hey. And like I was like, that's weird. You acting like you don't know me now? Like, that's crazy. And then following behind him was Cord, and Cord said, what's up? I'm like, what's up? He said, my name's Cord. Uh, he lost his memory. I just follow him around and tell people he lost his memory. I was like, Ooh, all right. What? I like, okay. And so he, then he walked away. I said, that was strange. So my friend eventually gained his memory back. And then he introduced me to his friend, Cord, and all his other friends that he hangs out with. And then I was like, and when I talked to Cord, I said, oh, bro, I, you funny as hell. I didn't know who you were the first time I met you. I said, <laughs> uh, and like, I think we were hanging out at one of the dorms and the Warriors were playing. That's back when the Warriors first started dominating. He said, I can't stand Steph Curry. And I said, <laughs> I said, I said, Cole, you hate Curry? He said, yeah, man, they clown my team every time we play them. I said, who you a fan of? The Clippers. I said, you a Clippers fan? Me too. And that was the first time I ever met another Clippers fan ever. Wow. It, was, it, was, it was like fate. So I had known him ever since freshman year. And me and him had actually had thoughts of starting a podcast, but that was just to talk about anime because that's all we ever watched and did. So we was gonna, originally going to start a podcast together doing anime. But then uh, when, we came, when I realized we were going to do this basketball music podcast, I said, oh, you love that stuff too. So would you be our co- my co-host? So really, he was a part of the original three. It was going to be me, my childhood friend, and him. So that's okay. how I met Cord. Okay. All right. And then Cam and uh, John, I'm guessing, were just through the mix of Twitter for the most part. Cam also went to Ole Miss, and I knew him for about two years, but I didn't think to add him until later. John was actually someone who listened to the podcast, and we were like, this dude's real cool. So we started uh, like playing video games with him on PS4. They're like, this dude's really, really cool. Let's add him to the podcast. Man, yeah, let me, right. hold on. The John thing is hilarious because, so it was Brandon. It was that day that one on Twitter said, hey, who wants to start a 2K league? And then you joined, everybody joined, blah, blah, blah. And then John added me. He said, oh, add me in there too. I said, bet. Added John in there. John joined the party. So then John's talking and everybody's like, hmm. And then he leaves. I'm like, wait, whose friend is that? <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, I thought you were different. We're all like, I thought you were different. So John was a random dude from Detroit who listened to the podcast. They infiltrated. He infiltrated. I'm say that. Yeah. No, and the funniest thing is, is I was like, that was during like I think I was like my first semester of like mid school. So I was like behind the curve on being on a game. So I got on a game and he was in a party one day. And he was just talking it up, and I sat and thought to myself, who the hell is this? <laughs> and, after he, and after he left, I said, bro, who is that? Oh, that's John. I'm like John, who? Dude from Twitter. Bro, it's a lot of Johns on Twitter. He was like, yeah. hey, Seth Goody. I'm like, bro, they ain't helping. I don't know who this is. <laughs> he listened to the podcast. I'm like, that still ain't helping. Who is he? <laughs> who friend is he? He said, and that's how they were like, I don't know. I said, all right. So, yeah. Shout out to John. Seth Goody came through. Yes, sir. Infiltrated the shit up. You know, we have to talk about that basketball league, too. That was the worst fucking day ever. Because we stayed up until like 3 a.m. For me, it was like 3 or 4 a.m. I, I fell asleep on the shit. Because we were doing the draft still or some shit. It took fucking forever. Yeah, that I got nothing that late, so I'm, I'm sorry for you, Brandon. And Brandon's internet always was twerking, so he never got to really play. It was it was an unfortunate situation. I would have won Three some years. of those games, too, had my every other time, every other possession, my shit didn't freeze. Because I need I that. I don't think that's true. I won't do that to you in your podcast, Brandon. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> was that? that I said, I don't think that's too true, but I don't want to do that to you on your podcast. I'm going to let you have it. I was winning when I wasn't going to beat you, but I was going to win one of those games. I would have beat somebody. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. My shots were money for a little bit. All right. So then after that, you guys started gaining a lot of popularity. You actually had how many? Okay. So the original Twitter account got deleted, got suspended. What happened there? So during that was during the phase where people could upload music videos to Twitter without fear of Twitter crashing down on them. And you know that you know Twitter with the whole policy of DMCA, like yeah, yeah, I can't post stuff on here anymore. The late the music label, so you can't do it. But I didn't really get that. Like by that point, when they announced that you couldn't do it anymore, uh, I had been doing, I had been like uploading music videos and like content to that page for months. And so I also didn't realize that um, just because I was like, okay, won't do it no more. I didn't know that mean I had to go back and find all those tweets and delete them. 
So I had posted a tweet about the Migos. Um, walk it, walk it, talk it. What's that? How this song? What's the name? Is that the name of the song? Walk, walk, walk it, talk it, talk it, walk it, talk it, talk it. With Drake, and I had posted it, and I was, you know, because it was funny. It was a funny music video, and then basically there was like, uh, you should not have posted. I got a DMCA from Twitter. You should not have posted this. Um, the label has reached out to us and said that this is a violation of copyright. Um, your page shall be suspended for that. And I was like, can I just delete the tweet? Uh, can I not? And like, literally, like this happened months ago. Like I posted this months ago. Like, can yeah. I not just delete the tweet? And I like filed and I was like, can I delete it? Like, can I get my page back? And they just, they weren't, Twitter never responded to me. They didn't budge, couldn't uh, overturn it. So it's, it's it, like, I check it every once in a while just to see. It's still in limbo. No, it's no, yeah. So that's how I got deleted because of the Migos. That is such bullshit, bro. What the fuck? Because of a music video? That's, Dude, that, that's that happened. The tweet was posted in August. They deleted the account in May. That that's is, a whole year almost. Like, yeah. Because that's, that's I was confused. nine months. Cause what the fuck? Because I don't. We don't talk about Migos that much anyway. So I was like, when I saw the tweet in question, I'm like, when the hell did we post this? It was a best music. It was a best music video. It was like the first half of the year. I yep. think that's what it was. Yep. It okay. was a thread. I got to wow. fuck out of here. All the that way is. Here. Twitter and, is so corny sometimes, bro. I don't understand it. And Twitter hit my main page up saying, hey, we realized that you posted a music video in 2019. And I know it was like 2017. And I was like, wait a minute. 2000. I said, oh, no. Because all I did on my page was make threads of like my favorite rappers and like their favorite, my favorite verses. So mm. literally, I just scanned through my media of like an entire day, like deleting music videos out of it just so that that page, my main page wouldn't get on. Um, suspended it was it was it was horrible man and you guys had a, a pretty big following at that with the first account how many were you at before it got taken down we were like a thousand and five hundred followers and we had had like we had made a wale thread the wale had like had quote retweeted and yeah it was like oh this is dope i like this we had i did a rhapsody thread that rhapsody responded to um G-I-D. to us jid had added us to about some stuff we had posted about him so we had we had some like we had some mainstream artists actually hitting us up on the page because of the things we were posting about them and then gone, deleted. That's so stupid. If it, if it wasn't anything derogatory or offensive, like why the fuck would they delete the fucking account? It would have just been as simple as please delete this tweet and for the future, do not post videos. Why yeah. the whole, exactly. why all of a sudden we had to suspend a whole fucking account? That's so yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it's just as simple as uh, fuck Migos. Um, fuck you, T, and you know, fuck anybody associated. But you know, it is what it is. So, if you're a fan of the podcast, you wonder why we randomly get angry at the Migos from time to time. That's that's why. <laughs> okay. Everyone, All right. Everyone's gonna be like, "Man, fuck the Migos." And like, <laughs> I know they probably sound they probably sounded wild without context. I probably think we just hating on that style of rap. Now we just we mad about the old Twitter page being deleted. Yeah, I would be too. Fuck, fuck the Migos. Fuck the Migos. I'm I'm doing it for my Twitter account now. <laughs> That's going to be the title of this episode, actually, is Fuck the Migos. I love That's it. what we're doing. I love it. <laughs> that or interconnection sucks. Anyway, um, yeah, but you guys are gaining a lot of pop- – How? and you guys gained the following back. You actually might have more followers now at that point. than We're close. We're close we're to getting close. Uh, back to where we were. Uh, we did that through a lot of different things where we just try to be real creative. Like we did the, pop- no, the popular demand tourney. Where basically we found a but we ha- I, on my main account I asked people like hey if you make music DM me quote under this tweet mm-hmm. um your link to your music I'm gonna check it out and so what I did was is I listened to a lot of different I listened I went through and listened to every single last one of them links I was bored it was like 2018 that was before I got into med school I was I took a year off so I was sitting there just listening to everybody's music I'm like wow that's actually some talented people in here. And so what we did was we pitted these artists against each other, put made a bracket, and then we made people on the Twitter vote, like, who do you think should win? And we was posting their music videos, which we were going to get dmca because of that. And um, by doing that, we gained a, we, they helped us gain a following because we had all these artists interacting with us and, like, their fans coming in and listening. And okay. then we just did a bunch – we did a lot, a lot of quirky, fun stuff like that on the Twitter page, a lot of creative things to, um, to um, convince people, like, hey, these guys, you know, we love music. Come check it out. Let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah, because you guys were doing a lot of different things. You were doing the award show. You were doing, you had like the top 50 albums. That might have been on your personal account. But either way, I mean, people are still following you who look through the 
popular demand podcast stuff. I, like, what was the moment where you guys felt like this, the, this was like gaining traction because that's really, sometimes it's like really hard to break that mold, like that moment where you're like, Oh, okay, this is about to pop. I think it wasn't until, um, for me, this, cause like I'm the one I used to get to see all the numbers and sometimes I forget to share with the line and the other guys. Cause sometimes I think they wouldn't care to see it. Uh, cause I've looked at it every single, I was at one point looking at it every single day, but the moment where I feel like, Oh, this is actually going somewhere is when I think something happened related to, I can't remember what it was. I think it was related to music. And people were on the podcast page, adding the podcast page, like, I can't wait till next episode to hear what Core got to say about this. <laughs> and, or I can't wait till next episode, like, oh my goodness, what Core said last week was so funny. Or the guy on the, 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 guy on the, uh, the podcast, that guy Core hates J. Cole. It's so funny. Uh, when people started, like, yeah. listen, I realized at that point, I realized people are listening to the podcast. They're remembering names of the people on the podcast. And they're like, and they're see, they're reading and seeing things on Twitter and instantly thinking and tying back an association to the podcast and coming back and talking wanting to talk about it. That's when I realized that the podcast was like taking off. I realized, oh, people are actually listening, people are actually enjoying it, and people are actually like learning my co-host names. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's huge. Once once it, once once uh people start getting a fan base, you know, I feel it was Cord the first one to get the fan base from from the popular demand. Yeah, because he has as. Many would know the most. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? The most eccentric personality. Yeah. So a lot of times you listen to a podcast. A lot of guys um, don't really don't really pop when you're listening to them. Uh, your boy Bobby, for instance, like he had that pop listening to y'all new faces. I'm like instantly, I'm like this guy's hilarious, and I mm. remembered his name after like maybe like two episodes. And like yeah. you have a very distinct voice as well. And chords like that too, where it was like he's so hard not to notice on the episode because of the <laughs> crazy shit he say as yeah. well as just how dramatic he can be so he was definitely the first one after that it was probably the delon or cam because people would be like i think anytime the sons would do anything like oh sons nation <laughs> us, like sons nation i know cam excited <laughs> uh and then usually people just people don't even usually at about delon to the podcast page. they usually just at delon directly when they want to have something they got something to say <laughs> i was just laying there for no fucking reason <laughs> like, like, at- people ask my personal <laughs> I wouldn't say no reason now. I wouldn't say no reason. Come on, Sometimes Brandon. you deserve it. Come on, Brandon. <laughs> Niggas on my head about my Nas take, about Nas is an attention whore. Man, I just wake up to some shit. Like they, they circumvent the podcast page and me, and they go straight to that line. It's like, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, low-key, though, you weren't wrong about the Nas thing. I'm thank you, that. Grant. Just uh, thank you so very much. He's an attention whore. Every time he drops an album, there has to be some controversy behind it. He's either slandering a black man, black people in general, or a black woman. Um, I think everyone needs to realize that because Nas hasn't put out an album without controversy ever since his debut. Tough. That's fair. That's Still fair. I'm also this. not much of a. I've said this before. I literally the last episode of New Faces, Nas is scaring the woman away, but. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a huge Nas guy. Just not. Uh, you know, it's like I can, I get it. It's either, either one or the other. Either Hove or Nas or neither. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just like I don't know. His music bores the shit out of me. I can't really get into it. I can I I can I can get why you say that. To be honest yeah. with you. You're J Cole. Hmm? I love J Cole. So. Hey man. Let That's why when know. Grant goes at him, I'm like, yo, you gotta chill the fuck out. <laughs> Grant's got to relax just a little bit. Ooh. All right. Now, this is a question I wanted to ask before my connection, you know, went to fucking shit. Um, call the corner. Now, that is my favorite episode that you guys have ever recorded. Like, I literally could not stop laughing. I really, literally replayed the video thousands of times. It is the funniest video. I need to know, Delon, how, when did you and Cam decide to do that? Like, that was the funniest shit ever so so that <laughs> that night I, I i remember very distinctly uh jordan had his shift on the problematic posse uh gaming page so he was busy playing a game and i i, I commented i said hey jordan you watching that clippers game he said no i'm not watching the series i'm done i'm not watching anything <laughs> I'm like, all right bet they lost i immediately texted john cam uh jacquez uh i said yo 
Next episode, everybody wear all black. We going in. Um, Jarquez and John couldn't be on that episode, but Cam. He, the, the, the funniest part was the setup before the podcast started. Because Cam showed up and is all black. Um, I had a black shirt on, but I had mine covered up. They said, "Damn, Cam, what's happening?" He said, "You know, about to go to a family event. You know, just wanted to see what this black fit looked like." He's like, "All right, all right, cool." <laughs> so it make no sense, but Cam do stuff like that, so I didn't question it too hard. I'm like, "All right." All right, whatever. It's Cam being Cam. <laughs> Saturday, Cam is sitting outside in an all black outfit. So the podcast starts. Jordan gets to talking. I turn off my camera so I can get changed. And a lot of times I just turn off my camera because I'm like looking up stuff. I, I, I look up a lot of like the stats and stuff while we're uh, doing the podcast. I like cut Jordan off and I just have to let it rip, man. The, the call corner, I feel like on the podcast, we have some recurring things that I really like. like we have some segments, but we had a Magic Johnson funeral early in the year that was just hilarious to me. Oh yeah, gotta bring it back, uh, and the, that was a perfect opportunity. That was <laughs> that was one of my favorite episodes, of Magic Johnson one, because core, oh, yeah. core, improv core. Because thing is, he don't write nothing down; he don't prepare at all. But he, you wouldn't believe it the way he talks about certain topics. Like I was, I like going back and listen to that video today. I'm like, there's just no way he did he did this without writing anything down. It's God, man. Court is naturally funny as fuck. I yeah. love oh, Court yeah. to death, yeah. but that. Yeah, that was definitely my favorite episode you guys have done. And I've listened since like episode like 60. Like I, I don't remember exactly when I first started following you guys, mm -hmm. but I've been listening consistently. And that one, like I literally could not have asked for a better episode because I was wondering how it was going to go because Jordan said he wasn't watching it. I remember him either saying that in the group chat that we're in or on Twitter or both. I don't really remember, but you said you weren't watching it. And when they blew the lead, and Kawhi and Paul George had the nights they had. I'm like, what is Delon going to come with? I, know, <laughs> I already know Cord and Jordan are going to shit on them because they're the Clipper fans, so they're going to say something about it. But what's Delon going to say? What's Cam going to say? What's John going to say? Like, I was so curious as to how that was going to go, and it was the funniest shit ever. That was my easily my favorite episode. And I'm gonna I, I, at at the end of this, I'm gonna replay that whole episode because that was so good. Yeah, I, I did not watch game seven of Nuggets versus Clippers. I was in my room drinking wine, playing my game. And my roommate came in. He was a Lakers fan. He was knocking on the door. He said, Jorn, you going to come watch the game? Game seven on. I'm like, no. He like, the, the Clippers, he was like, you ain't going to see it? I'm like, I know how this story ends. <laughs> no. And so I sat, he said, all right. So he went back in the room, watched the game by himself. And I sat in my room, drank my wine. Then I got the dun, 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 and the notification on my phone, looked at it, and I said, I knew it, and sat it back down. <laughs> and I just sat there. <laughs> just sat there in pain, man. I was so damn mad. But I'm <laughs> I'm really proud of, like, the love and the camp because I I think I've had a hand in most of, like, the uh, segments, the, the unique segments we've done on the podcast. So for them to just do that improv on their own, and it was – for it to be so great, oh, my God, it was amazing. I was like, yeah, I'm proud of the of the London camp for pulling it off. Absolutely, yeah, that was that's that was incredible. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in the link too. I'm gonna put that that link in there so everyone understands that we need to watch this. Oh yeah, I still have the video saved to my phone too, so I'm probably gonna repost that sometime today or retweet it. That that is the greatest episode of episodes ever. I wish I could record something that good, honestly. All right, now the when it comes to the award shows that you guys do, I mean, I fucking hate award shows. I don't watch the Grammys. I don't watch the Oscars. I don't watch any of that shit. So when did you, who was the first one to decide what they were going to do and how you guys were going to do it? Because I feel like you guys do it in a very authentic, real where like way where it's not just you guys kind of choosing. It's kind of seeing what Twitter and like social media is kind of saying and how they're kind of going you know, in terms of positivity, you know what I mean? Like Griselda yes. all last year was definitely the name that everyone brought up even the year prior, Freddie Gibbs, all that stuff. So I want to, I want to hear the breakdown of how this happened. So Delon a lot of times comes up with a lot of the ideas for the podcast and he'll like, just text me like five, like it'd just be out of nowhere. It takes me five things like, John, we should try this. We should try that. We should try this. So I don't know if this is one of those things he like, this is an award show. And I was like, yeah, you're right. We should do that. I can't remember who came up with it or whatever, but whoever, after realizing we, we want to do a award show, it was more so like, what, what do we want to accomplish with this? 
And I knew in terms of award show, I wanted to celebrate hip hop artists that I feel like just don't get those kind of looks. I wanted to focus on hip hop. I feel like a lot of war shows starting to focus more on popularity, which is what people hated. Like people want to like recognize the actual music, talk about, you know, like who's the best rapper or who's, you know, who's an upcoming MC. So we centered, I asked a lot of people, friends, like my original co-host, I talked to him all the time. He, like I say, my childhood friend, I talked to him. I talked to Delon, I talked to Cord. I talked to people, friends I've made on Twitter. And I was like, what are some categories you think that we could talk about that will emphasize hip hop? Like best guest feature. Like that's something that, I, that's something that no hip hop award shows even do. So we yeah. want to recognize best um, guest feature, like maybe best mixtape, best EP, um, stuff like that. Uh, best remix and things of that nature. Like we, so said that, you know, best lyricist and like defining what we mean by that, but also creating categories for non-lyricist artists. So like song of the summer and, you know, stuff like that. So we, it was a group effort, a conglomerate of ideas from a lot of great minds on Twitter, a lot of great minds I know personally. And um, after that, it was, a, then like I said, after that, deciding how to do the process, like the voting process and how many people we should allow each round to participate and vote on what, what, what album deserves to go on. Uh, that was like the, all those rules, things came up from consulting different people and asking them, what do you think about this? Do you think this is fair? Cause we wanted to eliminate as much bias as possible. Cause you know, that's what pe we do. So yeah. I tried to reach out to different kinds of hip hop fans and make sure I wasn't just asking people who just agree with me musically. I made sure I asked other people who's, takes on music i don't agree with at all to also participate okay okay yeah because i i feel like the different the differing opinions is going to help with that award show in the totality and also makes great for you know podcast material um so so delon's usually the one that comes with the ideas then he, yeah, he comes up with a lot of great ideas like a lot to you some of them i don't ever get to do because I'm like, that's a great idea. Do I have the time to make it happen? And that's a lot of times what decides if things happen on the podcast, whether I have the time to do it or not. But yeah. Delon comes up with a lot of great stuff. Like he's a lot of our most notorious things. The I don't I think the I think the award show is like the one thing I didn't like the one like huge thing I didn't uh but the all decade list, uh March yep. Madness, that yep. top fifty troll list. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, a bunch of random, a bunch of things like that. Uh, the first funeral episode, yeah, some random things like that. I just yeah, I, doing like 3 a.m. Like, hey, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and he'll answer like at like 5 p.m. with the response. I'm so confused how people feel for the troll list to this day. And I, I didn't know Delon was even going to do that. I just, <laughs> uh, I just saw like, like, you know, you got two multiple accounts on Twitter, so you get like a little bubble. And I got like, it was like 20 plus. I'm like, what the hell? Who, who posts on the podcast page? And then I look, I said, yo, this is hilarious. And people was like at me because like that time they thought I was on the control of the account. And like, yeah. did you make this? I'm like, I wish I did. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> and like people, yeah. and people are falling for a hook, line, and sinker. I cannot believe people fell for that either. I don't remember exactly what it, like who was on there, but I remember there was a name that was like so obvious that it wasn't real. And people were like, how the fuck could you put him on there? I, I need who was it? It was, it was like it was a lot of names. The, the beginning of the list. Oh, it was a lot of names. The beginning of the list, I wanted to make sure it looked pretty legitimate. So, you know, J, Pac, Big, threw in Wayne, just get a little, oh, these guys are a little edgy. Um, legitimate, legitimate, Iggy Azalea. And it just kept going down like that. People were like, Iggy over Nikki? I'm like, that's the part of this that's like not vanilla ice being on the top 50 all time it's it's Iggy over nikki that's really getting to you right now it's the fact that i think you had iggy top 15 rappers all time and nikki was like 45 and they didn't think to themselves in their head that this has to be a joke for anybody to think iggy azalea is top 15 mcs yeah. all time like i, I was like on it. i said if they have an asterisk by their name that means uh they have ghostwriting rumors i put it by black thought nas uh <laughs> A big Drake. man. Yeah, did the did the barbs come after you for that one or no? Oh yeah, the barbs hated us for a solid eight months. Like then we just kept. It was mostly Cord's fault. I'll say that. Yeah, um, Cord caused a lot of barb hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the secret to the podcast was getting the bars back on our side. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, um, we, the we top like... fifty list or no, the all decade list. We had Nikki in the first tier, 
And the bar's like, yeah, y'all need to recognize that, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, I really appreciate <laughs> Yes, you do. We oh, well. recognize one queen over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still really don't have the best relationship with the barbs, so I don't mean like open any old wounds or anything. No. Uh, no yeah, they were just no. slandering people in our mentions who were disrespecting Nikki. It was great. They, they were doing the promo. I still don't uh, – so we used to make – just Young Money fans in general mad because Drake fans hated us for a long time too. Mostly because of the sound bites I post a co-worker core is a notorious Drake hater. And like his sound bites on Drake are just always so funny that I can't help but post them. Yeah. And it's funny because I posted his opinion on Drake and I posted, I think Cord, I, put, I posted Core's opinion on Drake, which is a very ne- a very negative one. Okay. And I posted Delon's take on Drake, which is a very positive one. And they only quoted the De- and I, I made a thread out of it too. So it's like, here's the Lund take, here's Core take. They only retweeted Core's take. And they were like, Nikki fans and Drake fans were in our mentions mad. Who wants to listen to this podcast? I can't believe anybody listens to this. this is, y- 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 y'all let this happen on your podcast? I'm like, literally, this a tweet above this with somebody just agreeing with this on the podcast. <laughs> like, what, like, this is two, this is two different opinions. Like, you know, yeah. and like, no, nah, they just, we had like, I think we had like multiple Drake fans like block us. And like they blocked Delon and like John, like this was like a notorious guy who hate who loves Drake and like hates my Twitter account. He blocked me. He blocked the podcast page, and then he blocked Delon, John, and Jacquez, who are all Drake fans. He blocked all three of them. So I was like, Ugh. didn't block Cord. He did not block Cord. No, that's the most funny thing. He didn't block Cord. I think I know which one, which guy you're talking about too. It's, it's a lot. If you really, which I don't even remember anymore. Okay, I was, I was like two years ago. I, I really don't remember now. This one of the boys, the OVO on their name. This one yeah. of the boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the OVO gang. They don't. They, yeah. you, know how, you know how little that narrows it down the line. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. OVO is angels. So what 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 kind of like what are you looking forward to with with the podcast moving forward? Like what do you guys have planned? Do you guys have anything planned like at all? Like what's what's the next steps for this? Or because like because like you guys both have your own lives, you have your own jobs. Is this something you plan on doing for the rest of your life, or is this just kind of like a hobby until like whatever you're going to school for really like starts to kick in? So I want to take this. It's definitely a hobby, something I enjoy doing every week, and I'd like for it to continue as long as possible. Main thing is, as long as we're having fun, I want to keep doing it. And like Cord and Delon, they probably think it's weird when I ask them this. I'm like, are you having fun? Like, are you still having fun? Because the last thing I want to do is make this feel like a chore every week. So if 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 Cord and Delon ever get tired of doing it, I'm be like, all right, go on gonna pack it up that's that's gonna be the end of it because then like it ain't no fun knowing every week that somebody hates doing it so it's something i would like to continue for as long as possible as long as we can because like i said i enjoy doing it week to week so i in terms of like what we have planned for it nothing concrete right now we're doing a you know we're doing the album club where we take an album once a week and we sit down with different people from twitter and talk about the album like in a book club style. But other than that, we don't really have anything big planned with the podcast. Which I still have to get on to. I missed the la- the first two. Mm, you heard me. You heard me, Brandon. I ain't gonna lie to you. Every single time, damn, we really need Brandon's opinion on this. And you're somewhere probably stressed out doing some writing an article or something, to be honest with you. But yeah. Damn. I don't know if you know I haven't you. I haven't written anything in like a month right now. Because it is stressful as fuck i just don't even want to do it right now but i'll get to i'll get back to it eventually we know you're a very busy man with a, with a lot of endeavors so i try, that's why a lot of times when we ask you something i don't try to press you too much i'm like brandon got shit he got to do i understand well most times like i i'm focusing back on the podcasting a little bit more and you know i'm trying to balance the two i'm not very good at balancing shit so like if i'm like focused on a podcast it's usually like I'm, my entire focus is in making this podcast Mm-hmm. as big as possible and then i put other shit on the back burner mm-hmm. and i should just try to do both and i'm trying but i'm not motivated by anything to write about yeah. like music wise there really hasn't been anything so far this year that i've been like oh i need to write about this like good or bad i'm just like indifferent to like everything i've heard so far i was i thought drake was going to give us something to talk about all month long he let me down I was yeah. I was ready. I was ready for the like the the constant wars on, on Twitter that he was going to create with that album. I thought it was going to kick us. I thought it was going to kick off twenty twenty one the right direction, but you know we got to wait. Yeah, he had to get surgery for his AAU uh, OVO you know league, so <laughs> he's rehabbing. He's got to get ready. He's got to get his 
Achilles or ACL right. He'll be all right. He'll be all right. Um, I think I asked everything I wanted to. I mean, I, I guess we could talk a little bit about the music. Like what, who, for like the people who don't listen to you guys, like who are like your favorite artists and like kind of like basing up. Cause like you guys, I feel like you guys can listen to everything, but I feel like both of you have your own different styles. Delon, especially Delon kind of listens to, I, I know he listens to more pop centric music as well. Jordan's more of the hip hop stuff. So I want to know where you guys land in terms of favorite artists and all that stuff. That's the best thing about the podcast. Everyone has such very different tastes. No one listens to the same thing. Um, so I'll say me, uh, Drake, Kendrick, my, but my favorite artists I don't listen to on the regular. So I, I really never listen to Drake and I never listen to Kendrick. Um, yeah. But Drake, Kendrick, most I play Isaiah Rashad, a um, lot, lot of Outkast, um, but definitely a lot of the people who I feel like are just like talented in other areas of Billie Eilish's Doja Cat, I believe has the complete move set. Um, to really lead the next generation if she stops fucking up. Um, yeah. So really, I, I listen to most everything. Griselda, Benny the Bush is my favorite rapper the last three years. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for myself, Kendrick Lamar is my favorite rapper, probably all time. Um, been a fan of him since, I, probably since, yeah, since Overly Dedicated. That's when I first started listening to him. And uh I don't actually like DeLon, though, because he's been my favorite artist for so long. I don't care to, like, listen to him 24-7, like some yeah. people do with their favorite artists. So I actually don't listen to Kendrick, like, day to day. Like, I don't. Mostly because there's also so much other music I'm interested in, so many other talented artists that I love. And because of that, where I used to have, like, a firm top five rappers, like, it used to be, back in, like, high school, it used to be Kendrick, Drake, Big Sean, Wale, and I'm blanking on who the fifth person used to be. Might have been Crit. Um, Cole. Yeah, oh, yeah, Cole, that's it. It was, it was actually those five, those five. That was like my top five concrete. Mm-hmm. And everyone, and as years went on, one of them was like slide out. I put like a new artist in. One was slide out, put a new artist in. And that's got to the point now where I just like, just in, just indulge myself in hip hop period. Like it just depends on my mood because I have so much hip hop on my phone. So like it's a rainy day, I'll play, I'll play like, I don't like shit. I don't go outside by Earl sweatshirt. Um, if I'm getting ready for like class, I don't have to like, um, get myself going. Like I'll throw on Mac Miller's um, Good AM Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. I love playing Clubhouse in the morning. Uh, Great song to get to, to to wake yourself up to. Yes, that album. Yes. Uh, and like I said, it just it just depends on my mood now. So at the point where I listen to, I put, like a lot of times I'll just give you the house. I put my phone on shuffle. Like I don't pretty much listen to anybody consistently unless till somebody puts an album out that really sticks with me. And then I probably listened to just that album for like a whole month. And I think the last album, really many albums in 2020 that made me do that, except I do remember Knowledge 1988 um, beat tape had me like that where I was listening to it every single day. I actually love that album. Okay. All right. Because, yeah, that's the same way with me. I'm not listening, like, Max, my favorite rapper. I have, I listened to him recently, but like before that, it was kind of like I took a break. Cause like, I feel like if I listen to him so much, I'm not going to like his music anymore. Yeah. And like, I don't even want to like do that to like him as like an artist. So I'm like, yeah. right, I'm, I'm just going to chill. And I try to like listen to other shit. Sometimes I'm just like not in the mood to like listen to current day music. I've been listening to like throwbacks. Cause like this, like Spotify is like the time capsule shit. Yeah. So like, I'll just listen to like old shit that I already have saved on my throwback playlist. But Who's an artist for you guys that like you really like fucked with to begin with and has just fallen off completely for you? Like not even like in terms of listenability. Hmm. That went a very different way than I thought that question was about to go. Um, well, did you think I was going with that? I thought you were about to say who were some artists that we listened to because I was about to like chime in on laughing again. I thought you were about to say who were some artists we listened to like from the very beginning. And then I was going to say um, like like we like the, all the artists that we like got for the proper man turning. Like I listen to them more than I listen to anybody else. Nate Joel, fucking Shane the Shaman, Paragon Don. Like I listen to them regularly. So okay. it's funny that you switch that up. I'll probably say my answer will be probably Chance. What a shame what happened to Chance. Astarap is my second favorite mixtape of the last decade. So man, that fall off hurt. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say chance. Jesus Christ, 100 chance. I'm gonna tell you what. I was about to start making some bold claims on Twitter 
about Chance after Acid Rap came out and after uh, Surf came out. And I think it was also like the run of time. He was still posting like a lot of music on like uh, SoundCloud. So like, I remember he did that sparring song with him and No Name. And I'm like, oh, these two, they, they, they in their bag. They barring each other up. I like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was thinking, I was like, T- Chance is a very talented writer. A very talent. He's very methodical. He takes a, I mean, he made like a song about a guy who was having withdrawals from like heroin over, overdose. And like, but he didn't say that's what it was about. So like the whole time I'm listening to him, I'm like, what, what is he describing? And I'm like, this is so cool listening to an artist be just creative and making a song sound really, really good while doing something of that nature. And I was, I was close to saying like he was one of the best lyricists in the game. Lupe Fiasco actually got on Twitter and said that Chance is probably one of the better lyricists of the upcoming age of rappers. And that just, I don't even recognize him anymore as an artist. No. Past no. like Color Book was still there. You hear that song with him and um Jay Electronica. Love that verse from Chance. But then from that point on, like you don't even recognize him as a writer. Don't recognize him as a lyricist. It just makes it's just it's very, very sad. So him, he's he's by far the biggest disappointment for me in terms of rap. Yeah, I would say that he was pretty much on his way to being like recognized as a top five rapper in today's like game like even like joe budden was saying like he's up next like he's gonna be on top for the next decade like a whole bunch of people were saying that and then he dropped his latest record which was the big day and that was it those talks ended immediately that yeah i'm a hot shower apologist i will say that i am a hot shower apologist but that album is frustrating i think that's all i can describe it delon kuzma (laughs) <laughs> that song is not as bad as people make it seem. Kyle whoa, Kuzma whoa. made that song as bad. Whoa, Kyle whoa. <laughs> so much worse. Cauliflower. Jesus. That song is terrible. That song was but terrible like, before like, Kyle Kuzma. I don't, I don't think, do you, do you get a hot water, hot shower? Do you get like, do you <laughs> hot, no, damn hot no. water, hot shower? Yeah, I get it. It's not good. It's not a good like when you get in the water like really high, like hot damn, like you don't don't worry about it. (laughs) Don't don't worry about it. (laughs) He's here, y'all are here. It's it's all right. Y'all understand. (laughs) (laughs) No, chance was I've never really been a big huge like a huge fan of chance, but I knew his like talent, like was like right there. Like coloring book was like pretty good, but I wasn't like Acid rap was good, of course, but like that was pretty much it. Like there, I I haven't really been in love with Chance's music in a very long time, and I think it's more so because Chance fans have kind of pissed me off. There's a lot of people at the University of Scranton that loved, like I listened to his music in every basement party imaginable. And I'm like, bro, turn this fucking shit off already. Like I'm trying to listen to Uzi or some shit. Like get out of here. <laughs> when I was in college, when I was in college, that hey man, I was a big Chance fan, and I think this one guy, one guy in particular, almost made me hate Chance because he was Chance was his favorite rapper, and all he did was talk about Chance this, Chance that, and we'll be just at the crib hanging out, hanging out, playing games, doing mm-hmm. you know recreational things, and he'll be like, "Pass me the ox," and he'll play Ultra Light Beam. He did this shit every single night. We was the other like being this is the god dream. I'm like, bro, just scaring the hoes. Like, literally, <laughs> literally, like, like I'm like, why is he playing this again, bro? Like, he played this last night. Like, this yeah. don't have to be in the set list every oh my god. Chance became the guy who like when people are like, I don't listen to rap, but I like Eminem. It, it's now I don't listen to rap, but I like chance. And once yeah. you hit that level, it's like damn. Yep. Logic's in that level. Um G Easy is in that level. I know Post Malone. I, Post Malone. No, I'm not a big rap fan, but Post Malone, I'm like Post Malone don't even make rap music anymore. Like <laughs> you don't, don't even like try to pretend he's a rapper anymore. Like he's literally like straight like six smoking rock star. Like that's it. Like he don't he don't be rapping like that no more. No. <sighs> uh I, honor, honorable mention uh Joyner Lucas. <laughs> nah. Man. I've never liked him, honestly. I never. Oh nah, man, that one album, that that one phone number album, that was immaculate. I love that. Ever since then, he has just oh. been an asshole. <laughs> so I'm not racist. Video, I, I think ended it ended him. Woo! I'm Woo! not racist. Video was hilarious. I ain't gonna hold you, fam. Like I watched it over and over again. Like I was like, what am I seeing here? Yeah, I I was like, this dude really thought he had something with this one. 
No, nah, man, when Facebook got a hold of that video, it was whatever when, they, when it dropped. When Facebook got a hold of that video. My family would ask me about it. That's, that's, that's why I knew it was be it. Man, white people in Mississippi thought, it, thought the game was over. Oh, well, why can't y'all listen to us about Trump? Listen to this guy. This is a good black one. <laughs> the good black guy. Oh, man. Man. Yeah, there's a few of those in this area, too. I ain't gonna lie. They really <laughs> fuck with Joyner. You know, I'm like, Mm-mm, not me. Few cops that I know that like Jordan. They're like, yeah, Joey Lucas. Like, anytime, because, like, I'm known as, like, the rap guy in my area. So, like, anytime, like, someone comes up to me and talks to me about music, it's, like, about Logic or Joyner Lucas. And I'm like, bro, I don't listen to these motherfuckers. I don't. Brandy, you're telling me that when you and your lady are coming in for a nice nice night, you turn on the candles, you don't have the set list play with Joyner Lucas and Hobson in the background? Like, that's not what y'all are. <laughs> that's bro. not what y'all are. Okay. Hobson was another one that I will say I did like Hobson at one point. I did. That's sad, but I liked Hobson. No, hey, no. Eighth grade me loved Hobson. Yeah. Hobson, Hobson was great. And then I realized he was just literally being Eminem. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm just saying it. And then the songs just got worse and more nuts. And I'm like, mm. yeah, the, 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 what was the one where he was like getting a, you know, a massage or some shit or whatever. <laughs> Like he was getting a he was getting a little rub and tug type of deal going on. That was his song. I'm like, son, you cannot make that song and think that people are gonna listen to this and enjoy it. Like, there is no fucking way. I was trying to be a fan, but I couldn't get over the album titles. Like, I'm like, I couldn't tweet about. It. I'm like, damn, I'm really excited for Pound Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not tweeting that. I can't. Whoever, well, like his team, just needed work. Yeah. Yo, what's even worse was I was listening. So I, the ill mind of Hobson's used to be my shit. I was like in high school, like, yo, this, this dude is like for real. And then like, I listened to him, like, I would say probably like last year sometime when like the Corona first started happening, I was just going through everything and I listened to it. I'm like, yo, this music fucking sucks. Why the fuck did I think this shit was And hot? it always did. <laughs> I was like, Ill Mind of Hobson 5 was literally gar. He was like, Oh, you smoke weed? You're a piece of shit. Like, I'm like, Who gives a fuck if he smokes weed? Bro? I'm like, Why do I think this Yo, shit like, He was in the face, like right here. I'm a <laughs> pregnant woman. Like, you fucking slut. You ruined your life. I'm like, Yo. Yo, I have- he was in their face, like fucking basically spitting in their eye about them smoking weed and like Frank skateboarding bitch, or some like, shit. Yo. I was like, fun. I got what, what really lost me was when he made the the song about the religion shit. I'm like, bro, no one gives a fuck. I he was trying so hard at that point. He was trying so hard. Damn, rest in peace, Hopkins career. Damn. Yeah, home homeboy's done. What were you about to say, Jordan? I'm glad I never got into Hobson. Uh, I don't know what it was. I think I, I guess I listened to him in a phase where I was still not open to trying a bunch of different stuff because like I heard him. I heard like the first two or three songs. Like, yeah, this ain't for me. It's just no. it's kind of like Tech Nine, like listen Tech Nine for the first time. Like, yeah, this isn't for me. Um, but I had another artist, and I'm, I'm probably gonna make Delon mad. Childish Gambino. Mm. I loved Childish Gambino in high school. I cannot listen to any of those music that I loved back then. I can't listen to none of them songs, almost none mm. of them. I don't like any of them anymore. It's just it's where I thought he was being very clever and witty. He used to be downright corny, and it hurts so much. Jokes. His early music was fart jokes. Like that's that's. <laughs> it was so bad, man. Oh my god! I was god. in and geeks yesterday. That man, he yikes! I can't <laughs> listen to Camp. I can't listen to uh, Royalty. Even though it has some amazing features on there, like from Black Hippie, and he had some more surprise. Blake Griffin did the intro. It was <laughs> that mixtape. Oh my god, it was so perfect back then. Uh, yeah. Can't listen to it anymore. I can only listen to select songs on Because the Internet. And I loved that app at the, at the time. Boy, I thought that boy, I thought, I thought Charles Gambino was on another plane of existence when he came up with the idea behind that album. Can't listen to it though. <laughs> um, I just do not enjoy his rapping no. at all. That's probably one of my um, artists I loved a lot and I just cannot listen to it anymore. I had another guy in mind, oh, Charles Hamilton. I used to think Charles Hamilton was the future. Okay. Until I until the future came and I went back and listened to his music, I thought to myself, like, what the hell was I thinking? Mm-hmm. But some of his music I still love, but a lot of it is like, this is 
this is very uh i don't get outside and, and there's there is there is one artist in particular for me that i used to like for some fucking reason i really don't know why like i listen back to his music like his album and i'm like there's no way that i liked this like <laughs> i publicly supported this man and that is Lil Xan. I was a Lil Xan fan. Ah, you know yeah, what, DeLong, Brandon? DeLong was too. You know what, Brandon? I was too. For two hey, seasons. all right. I don't gonna feel lie. as bad now. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, cause that man, I was, I was trying so hard to like, to like that, those guys. Cause I hated. I, I'm always late to liking things. Like I hated the Migos at first. Um, still fuck the Migos. Um, yeah. I hated Lil Xan, Lil Uzi, Lil Pump, blah, blah, blah. I, got around, I came around to Uzi. I came around to 21. Jesus, I love 21 Savage. And I'm like, let me try Lil Xan. You know, he had, he had some decent beats. Some very yeah. decent beats. Yeah, Man. I mean, I, 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 I think it was more so that people hated him so much that I was like, fuck it, I'm going to like him. And I think, like, I ended up liking his music by accident. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like me and my homeboy, who I like, I haven't even seen him forever. Like he just kind of disappeared. Like we used to like share a little. Like we would be like, "Oh, Lil Xan, like did it." Like we were like talk about it, and then I was just like, "I'm like listening." I'm like, "All right, I think I, think I got like I overplayed him." I'm like, "All right, like I'm gonna stop." And then I like played him like after like a couple months. I'm like, "I liked this guy. Why? What the fuck? What reason?" It's like it's like it's like when people like Lil Pump. Like I never liked him, and I'm like, "Why the fuck do people like him?" Like, I don't see it. And I'm like, yeah. like, maybe it's just like a different connection, like a different time. I don't know. But like, for me, like I had a connection with Lil Xan's music. I was like, all right, cool. This is fun. And then I'm like, no, nah, this, this music fucking sucks. Like, really, like, I think like sometimes like I picture myself playing this at a party and people be like, get the fuck out. Yes. Like, there's no way people would let me into their house if I played Lil Xan through my phone. Well, it's funny you, you mentioned Lil Pump because I always love the slanted chord. And I think I'll record an apology now, actually, because Cora said Lil Pump is the next of Lil Pump is the next Lil Wayne. And at the time, that sounded wild. But after seeing the, like, the last election, I guess, <laughs> I guess <laughs> Pump was the next Lil Wayne. So you know what, Cora, if you're listening to this, I sincerely apologize to you. All right. So here's, here's the difference, though. I think Lil Pump was trying. I mean, they were both going to Trump for something. Trump, Pump for clout. Wayne, so he didn't go to jail. Yeah, 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 that was it. Wayne yeah. knew he was gonna get the gun charges, and he was fucked. And he was, you know, all right, Trump's my guy. And then he got pardoned, and now he's free. Pump was just trying to get a little ounce of clout left that he had, and there's nothing there for him. There, I don't know if he makes music anymore. Like, I don't know if he released anything since like his like debut mixtape. Like, I have no idea. Brandon, question for you: Worst crash and burn, Will Pump or Blueface? Ooh, I gotta say, Blueface. I got to say Blueface because for me, Little Pump never – Little Pump gained a lot of popularity out of it. Like, he had, like, J. Cole pissed off and shit. Like, that's that's elite level of trolling, whereas Blueface really had Tatiana, and then that was it. Like, people like Blueface for, like, his, like, weird, like, off pace flow, whereas Little Pump was, like, making music and pissing off other – rappers like like j cole was like you know what i'm gonna fucking interview him and i'm gonna piss him off and to this day i still hate j cole for that fucking interview i hate it i hate it so much i'm like why the fuck did he fall for this and then he tells us he doesn't read books i'm like you motherfucker why? i gotta stop taking that quote out of context <laughs> Jesus. Gotta... hey j cole said that and then cord ran with it for three months j cole said he can't read j cole don't know how to read i'm like what the fuck um, speaking of Cord and this topic, uh, you talk about Lil Xan. Cord is always my litmus test for those kind of rappers, like those kind of edgy or kind of rappers that make hip, like real hip hop purists mad. He always loves those kind of guys, always. And mm. I'm like, Cord, why are you listening to this? He hates Lil Xan and he hates Lil Peep. So I just never listen to it. I'm like, if Cord can't listen to it, I know I can't. No, no. <laughs> Well, Lil, I like Lil Peep, but I, like Lil Xan, there's nothing. I don't know. There was nothing there for Lil Xan for me at, at this point. I'm like, ah. I don't even know if he makes music anymore. I, Ever I'm since not. he had to go to the hospital for uh, eating hot Cheetos, I was like, ah. And that's wild. That <laughs> is wild. <laughs> oh, boy, not about it. He's just not about the rap life. It's my first time hearing about this. 
You didn't hear about that? No. I don't know. I don't really see Lil Xan news. Like last time I saw Lil Xan in the news when he was saying something about he don't care about Tupac. That's a li- that's a literally the last time I heard anything about him. This all happened in the span of one month. He said he hated Tupac. He like pulled a gun on somebody for for like saying like the Tupac stuff because he was even bullied. He got a stomach pump from Flaming Hot Cheetos. Um so many things happen in one month that it is just hilarious. And see, Cor, like I said, Cor is usually the one who keeps me in touch with that side of hip hop, and he hates Lil Xan, so I had nobody to fill me in on these shenanigans. Yeah, I thought the Lil Xan like stomach getting pumped thing was as like as like memeable as like MG Kagan punched sixty five times in the chest. That shit was like the same thing to me. I'm like, yo, these two really like really had the dumbest thing happen to them. And MGK is still out here, but Lil Xan is not. That's because MGK don't make rap music anymore. And he started acting. He had to get out of rap. He, yeah, he had to leave rap. He did. <laughs> he did. He had a, he's 100% a better pop punk artist than a rap artist by a mile. I don't remember a single, besides um, Wild Boy, I don't know much MGK rap music at all. You shouldn't. No. <laughs> no. No. Not at all. Not at all. Not too many white boys in, in hip hop that are good. And he's definitely was in the the, the not good category whatsoever in hip hop. I'm trying to think of my, my new favorite like white rapper now that Mac has moved on. Uh Harlow. it's 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 probably who wait, who'd you say? Harlow. Harlow. Harlow is entertaining. I forget my boy. How I forget my boy. Harlow is entertaining, but I don't actually listen to him on a day-to-day basis. Uh that's the Tyler Hero song. <laughs> was stuck in my head for like a minute and I was like listening to it every other day but the all I think I can't say Action Bronson because I don't listen to him like that either I, I, yeah nobody it's nobody right now <laughs> you got zero people no no zero I thought right you were the easy way I'm just say logic to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt that was coming it's actually um, Doomsday oh man mm, Dr. Destruction I, didn't, I still didn't listen to that, and I don't plan on it. It's very, his, some of them skits are very cringy, but he what he's what he attempts on that album is pretty cool. I'll give him credit for that. I like the intergalactic theme on it more than I did that second album he made that everybody loves. Okay. I can't, you got to help me out with the line. I don't remember the name of it. Oh, the Incredible True Story, or everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Incredible True Story. He 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 puts that in there. No, no. Well, he is like. It's based in the future, and basically, Doctor Destruction recorded the music in the future and then sent it back to the past for people to hear. And so, in the in <laughs> on the album, the skits are like commercials from the future. So it's like a commercial for asteroid repellent and stuff like that. That part, the skits are very cringe, but the music is very cool. I'll music- take your word for it. Yeah, yeah. This I'm is, just this. gonna take your word for it Please on that do. one. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. It's like Eminem with the B sides shit. I was like, oh yeah, I'm good. Like, it's not some albums I'll probably ever listen to again. I might go back and revisit it just to hit the high points, but it's not something I'll actually like, put in rotation. You know what's hilarious about that? The shit that Brandon listens to, for the sake of journalistic integrity. It's hilarious because that's what he won't touch. <laughs> like Brad, when you put out your reviews, I'm like, oh, you really you you spent your time listening to that whole album? But <sighs> yeah. I feel like I, 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 by the way, I'm not doing that again because I listened to Kyle and I'm like, why the fuck did I do this? I don't know. Hey, that, that's one of the ones I'm like, oh, that's admirable of you. That is very admirable. Kyle. I couldn't, hey, I couldn't do that. I couldn't I, do it. My boy Kyle was like, I don't even know why you would listen to this and then write about it. I don't even know how that happened. Like, because I was just pumping out album reviews. That was the only thing out. Like, all right, fuck it. You man. and Tommy are doing the Lord's work because he does the same thing where, like, yeah. he'll, like, he'll post a link to one of his articles. I'm like, bro, who is this? Like, <laughs> why, t- I, I think it's more so like connected to like where he's at, though. Like, I'm listening to like whatever. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, I mean, he does the same thing. He does album reviews too, but like, he's also like, very in touch with like florida and like the the artists from there whereas like my city doesn't really have rappers yeah so like i'm kind of just like all right like i'm gonna listen to whatever's kind of big i guess and write about it and i was just like after i wrote that i'm like wow this is low i mean i I can't even i'm like i don't even know why i'm writing album reviews right now like this is bad Uh, i was like desperate for an article to come out basically 
I hope the rappers in my hometown never find out I have a podcast about music. Well, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, yeah, there was a couple in my area that that found out and messaged me, and I just died. I'm like, mm, no, probably no. Not. Yeah. no. Yeah, no. most of them aren't aren't very uh creative or good. Like there's there's like one or two that I've interviewed. There's three I've interviewed from this area, and two of them I went to school with, the other one Bobby knew. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Like these guys, like I'll I'll listen to it and I actually end up liking it and then I'll interview them. But like for the most part, like if it's some random dude and I listen to it and it's like not that good, I'm not gonna do it. Like I told you before, like Mississippi's always like five years behind Atlanta. Like people in my hometown are still making music that sounds like 2015 wow. uh, Atlanta scene music, heavy auto tune, reverb, changing the voice type, altering type stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I try to hear this production, and everything. So you're like telling I'm, me they're making Carter Five music. No, they're <laughs> yeah, some 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 of them songs, yes. Yes. Good God, I hate Lil Wayne when he, when he wails into auto tune. Man, it's bad. It's yeah, bad. no, it's it's not good. I haven't I, I can't I can't give well no, his latest album wasn't terrible, but like most times I'm I'm kind of over Wayne at this point. I am. I'm completely over him. <laughs> like yeah, I was at the point where he's like a legend and I I, I had held him so close to my heart. But now I'm at the point where it's like, I can't anymore. Yeah. I just can't. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how long it would take if I get there with Cole, but <laughs> Wayne, mm-hmm. I can't anymore. Cole be minding his business for the most part, besides the whole fucking thing with uh, No Name. That wasn't. Yeah. I was like, man, you got to stop fucking responding to shit. <laughs> you are embarrassing man. me. No, it's, it's the thing you choose to respond to. You are embarrassing me. It's the thing he chooses to respond to because a lot of things get said to him. I know. It's, this, 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 Cole that's what, was right. That's all that matters. Cole was right. Yeah, I agree. You, yeah, you, yeah. You I just wish. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just wish he never even did it to begin with. Because I'm just like, man, please. Something's not worth it. You know, every battle ain't worth fighting, whether you right or wrong. It's like me, like defending. I, I defend Big Sean, and then I hear him rap about pre com and I'm like, please fucking stop. Hey, and, please and, stop. Hey, I know. I feel you. Ugh. I feel you. I can't tell y'all how much I laughed or just like how I, how far my eyebrow went up listening to that Big Sean album while I'm walking through med school and him talking about Western medicine is weak. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't tell you how I, was, I can't tell you how I just like what? What? That's the dangerous part about this day and age. You get really excited for an album, you listen, and then it's just a bunch of anti vaxxer bars. <laughs> I was, I was like, dang, this Royce album is going to be pretty decent, man. Royce always, he never fails at rapping. You listen to the rapping. Three different songs about being an anti vaxxer All right. Hey, like, like most rappers just drop a bar about it, like Freddie Gibbs. Like, Freddie Gibbs dropped a bar, and he just kept it going. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Royce did a whole skit about it. Like, he did. He did. It's too, it's too much, man. Yeah, way too much. All right. Well, we talked about a lot. I wanted to get the little music in there at the end because, you know, I think it's fun when we discuss music. I, I enjoy talking music with you guys. Um, all right. One more thing, actually, for basketball, who you got um, as, like, a surprise team that could win, win it all? Surprise team that can win it all. Like I, I mean, the consensus is Lakers and then you yeah. have Nets, Sixers, whatever. Is there a team that you're seeing right now that's like, they're contenders. Uh, I don't see it in the Jazz. I think the Jazz are really good. I think they could be a Western Conference Finals team. Like I think they could get the Clippers the fuck out of here if they met in the in the um in the semis. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't really see any other team in the West being a legit contender over the Lakers. Even it's even hard for me to picture the Clippers being that. So my surprise pick would have to come out the East, and that team would have to be – I was going to say the Sixers because I don't know how people actually believe in them, like really, like really believe in them over like the Nets. But that's going to be – that would be my pick. If not them, it would probably be – the next surprise pick would probably be the Celtics because I don't believe – the only teams I believe could, um, as of right now, do something against the Nets. I was saying the Bucks, but the Bucks just got beat by both ball brothers. Um, they let both of them score 27. So, yeah, I don't believe in the Bucks anymore. Mm. <laughs> No, what about you, Delon? For me, I, I don't think there's any surprise contenders, but as I was saying last year, literally anything can happen in the bubble and people turn into superhumans. 
Um, I don't think that the Hornets could win it, but if they slip into the bubble, I think they can get an upset somewhere. Um, I think they can make some things shaky. I think they can take somebody in the seven. I've been a Hornets believer last. I've been telling Jordan since the beginning of the season. Hey, them boys hooping over there. Yeah. Um, he keeps not letting it be a topic on the podcast. One of these days. One of these days. I said, like, this is this is give them a little more time. And I'm glad we did it because they weren't in the playoff picture when you proposed that topic. Now they are. They're the AC right now in the East. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I I think the the big because I talked about Gordon Hayward and the career year he's having, but I think the big di- thing that's going to change it is when Lamelo takes Devontae Graham's spot mm-hmm. because he should be the starting point guard, no doubt. Terry Rozier at the two, Gordon Hayward at the three, at the wing. PJ Washington or Michael Bridges, and then Cody Zeller, and that's your team right there. That's a good. That's a good seventh, eighth, eighth seed team. I don't think they're gonna beat a team in the playoffs because maybe the Bucks. They could beat the Bucks. I don't think the Bucks are good. I really no, don't. No, I have no, no faith in Giannis and anything that has to do with Mike Budenholzer. So the Bucks, in theory, could be monstrous, but they just do not do the things that would make them so hard to defend. Yeah. They just choose not to. So, yeah, I don't have no faith in them. Not as long as Boonholz is there, I don't have no faith in them. I also think the Sixers can end up winning the East. But I think that's only going to happen if they trade Ben Simmons, to be quite honest. They need they need Bill. Because in the playoffs, you're going to have these positions where you're going to need a bucket getter. You're going to need somebody on the perimeter to create something. Uh, you saw that. I'm pretty sure you, you – I don't know if you saw that Lakers game against the Sixers. But they went to Tobias Harris in the game. Tobias hit it. But that's not Tobias Harris, man. He ain't like that. He ain't gonna go to a playoff series thinking, okay, we need we need to trade baskets. Keep yeah. going to Tobias. No, you're not gonna be able to do that. You were Tobias believe when he was on Clippers. Stop doing this, Jordan. No, no, I did. I believed in him. But when we traded him, I completely understood it. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Cause I didn't want to give him the max. Yeah. I did, I did not want to give him the max. If no, no, that's that's a disgusting deal. But if they do trade Ben Simmons for Beal, they're winning it. Yeah, I that'll be my guess. They will win it because I love I the the offense for the Nets is great. They don't have a single person that can defend. Not one. No, no, not I at think, all. Kevin Durant I think I, like is okay, but like that's about it. I think I saw status set starting centers are averaging like twenty four and eleven against the Nets since they made that trade. The Andre oh. Drummond is dookie, bro. Bad. Andre that's Drummond up. on the way. So now they can uh, average twenty eight, but you know slightly less rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> like, like 28 and 6, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if they get Andre Drummond, then that's that that could be a problem. But most times when he plays an elite center, they he gets run off the court. Which yeah, he wouldn't be no help against Joel and B. <laughs> no, no, but no one is. I mean, the only person that I've seen cover him well is AD. So no, the funny thing about a drum is he just he can't do anything against like and B. I might be completely wrong, but it feels like he gets like six rebounds and be getting fouled. Oh, yeah. He'd be fouling out and everything against MB. Like he, he even, clowns him every game, yeah. every time they play. He literally, his son wore the Nikki. Yeah, <laughs> it was like Cat when he got bullied by Embiid. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's the way to end it. I love it. All right, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Uh, this was co- quite the experience, given how many times we had to restart this fucking shit. But I appreciate you guys coming on, being patient with me with this whole thing, and uh, you know. Plug you guys' stuff away. You know what I'm saying? Oh, follow us at Podcast the Man on Twitter, the Popular Man Podcast. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on any almost any streaming services that host podcasts. Uh, yeah, so follow us at all those places. All right. No additional. I have nothing additional. All right. Give just give your ads on Twitter though. At oh. Jordan, or it's at JWAP6 and at Delon. Black. Follow me on Twitter, add Delantra, D-E-L-O-N-T-E-R-E-L-L-E. Um, go ahead and follow Young Pharaoh 32 uh, at J Bragg, at uh, ASAP Goody, at, damn, what's Cam? Oh, Cam Daniels. Yep. Bam. There you go. All right, guys. Thanks for listening, and tune in next episode. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. Leave a comment. Leave a rating. Whatever you got to do. Let me know what I can do better on. Let me know how it's going. And we will see you next time. Peace. Stream Doja Cat. Stream Doja Cat. Yeah. After this, the price definitely got to go up.
Um, so the question was, how, when did, 